Welcome to the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast with our mom, Misty Bailey. Tips and encouragement, God, real life homeschooling, it's headed your way. way. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast. Um, today's episode is a little bit different from any of the episodes I've done before, and if I'm honest, I'm a little nervous about sharing it with you all. So, um, as the date that this airs, it is our 10-year anniversary of homeschooling, which is crazy to me, um, but I'm so blessed to have been on this journey for 10 years, and I thought it would be fun to bring my girls on the air and talk to them about what our lives have really been like the past um, 10 years. So that's what we are doing. So the audio is a little bit off um, because this is the first episode I've actually recorded in, um, not in person, but yeah, I guess in person because we're just three people sharing one microphone in a big open room. But um, I think it's fun to hear from people's kids And the girls are real, guys. Like, (laughs) you're going to hear some snippetiness from my kids. You're going to hear some snippetiness from mom, unless my wonderful editor edits it all out. But um, it's real. You know, we talk about things that we wish we would have done differently through the years, things the girls remember, things that girls I thought they loved, only to find out that they're like, no, not so much. So um, it's a really fun episode and gives you guys a peek into our real lives So um, I'm super excited about it. Yeah, but I'm also a little nervous, if I'm honest. So um, I also want to share with you guys a few new items that we have in the store. So we just got a new batch of t-shirts in. They say, because homeschooling is hard without Jesus. And they're red. It's a really pretty, like a pinkish red collar. So go to jointhejourneystore.net to grab yours while I still have them in stock. And also, um, we have a brand new election unit study out in the store, and it is election season. You know, we're getting ready to dive into it. 2020 is an election year, so it's a great time to study elections with your kids. And you can grab it in the store also at joyinthejourneystore.net. So here we go into this episode. I hope you guys still love me and my kids when it's all said and done. And I'd love to know what you think of it. So you can email me misty at joyinthejourney.net. You can chime in on Instagram with the joyfully homeschooling podcast hashtag, or you can talk in my Facebook group, the joyfully homeschooling community. So let's dive in with this episode, guys. Podcast sponsors make the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast possible. So let's take a moment and thank our current sponsor, Masterpiece Society. Don't just expose your kids to art. Let them experience it. Charlotte Mason wrote, The art training of children should proceed on two lines. The child should begin both to express himself creatively and learn to appreciate art. Masterpiece Society is here to help you with both art expression and art appreciation by utilizing our rich multimedia art lessons and our open and go art appreciation curriculum you will create meaningful art experiences with your kids and teens we have completed a few lessons from the Masterpiece Society over the last few weeks and have really enjoyed what we have completed so far they make bringing art beauty and creativity into our home a painless process which is perfect for this busy homeschool mom who cringes at the thought of arts and crafts don't believe me try it out yourself for free go to finding joy in the journey dot net slash masterpiece society to get your free lesson delivered straight to your inbox that is finding joy in the journey dot net slash masterpiece society to get your free lesson delivered straight to your inbox. Now let's get on with the podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to the joyfully homeschooling podcast. I am Misty Bailey blogger at joy in the journey and podcaster here at joyfully homeschooling. And today's date is December 17th. We are actually recording this in October, but the date this is going to be going live is December 17th. And this has actually now been 10 years since I began homeschooling. 10. That is crazy. 
Uh, so about this time, 10 years ago, Allison had her last day of public school preschool. She left the school and has never gone back. And in that 10 years, our homeschool has changed a lot. And today I wanna to talk to you about some of our favorite homeschool memories, some of our worst, and I wanna let you all have a peek into what my kids really think of homeschooling. Now I gave them both a list of questions that we're gonna be going over and I have not seen their answers. They have not seen each other's answers. So this is gonna be pretty interesting, I feel like. So girls, can you introduce yourself? Allison, we'll start with you. Hi, as she said, my name is Allison Bailey. And how old are you, Allison? I'm 15, I turned 15 last month. And so you are in what grade? I'm a freshman in high school. A freshman in high school, Kristen. My name is Kristen Bailey. I am turning 13. By the time this is out, I'll be 13. And I'm in seventh grade. Okay. All right. So that is my girls. So we're going to dive right into these questions. So, um, Allison, we're going to start this one with you. What has been your favorite homeschool memory? Um, it was probably whenever it was our home days of school and you'd pick me up from babysitting and we got in here and you had a big box of donuts and chocolate milk. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> was that this past, that was this past yeah. year for our heart of the day of school. Yeah, so it was just this well, past I school year. I have donuts, so. I got donuts that you could have too. <gasps> I remember that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's funny that that's your favorite memory. So all of those years before when we did like super fun 100th day of school activities like, and. What, where we counted backwards from 100? Yeah, we yeah, did all the. Yeah, super fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's not your favorite memory, but your, the donuts are. That's <laughs> fun. All right, Kristen, what about you? Playing Coco and co-op. It was an African game that we played last year in co-op. And basically it's like tag, but there's teams and you normally play on like a basketball court or something. And one team stands on outside of the basketball court and has to run to the other side, but the other team is like sitting down in the middle. And then there's one later who's standing up, but then only one person on the team that has to tag them can be standing at one time. So whoever has to be standing, they the leader yells that name and then they have to stand up and try and hit the other person and like tag them. Okay, so we'll see if we can find instructions on how to play that and put that in the show notes. I've never watched you guys play that. I, I, I've been asking to play it ever since, but nobody else likes it. Oh, yeah? Well, I, I think Kristen likes it so much because she gets to hit people. Yeah, the first time I uh, attacked somebody, you could kind of hear it. <laughs> and it, it was Brandon's brother. <laughs> so, so you guys are violent. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Okay. All right, so my favorite homeschool memory... Um, is probably when you guys were little and you guys would dress up in your prairie clothes and you would turn the um, playroom into like a covered wagon. You would cover the table with like a sheet and you I guys would dress that. up. And I would use uh, stuffed horses and stuff. Yeah, that was probably some of my favorite <laughs> memories. Um, okay, so our next question, and I'm a little afraid to ask this one, but I'm curious to hear your guys' answers, kind of, sort of. And that is, what has been your worst memory? So this time, Kristen, we're going to start with you. I don't know. I'm not really good in the memory department. Like, so you don't have a worst memory for your homeschool? It took me forever to think of a favorite memory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good with memories. You're not very good with memories? Yeah. So you can't think of anything through the years that you're like, yeah, that really stuck? Um, I don't know. Did we have, like, any, like, rip-off field trips or anything? Like, <laughs> well, actually, we did. I don't know if you remember this, but it was one of our very first homeschool group memories. Memories, not memories, but field trips. And it was to see Winnie the Pooh and the Christmas Tale at the um, Paramount. And it was a horrible, horrible play. We were all looking oh, at each I other. Have, I have a bad one. Okay. Well, let me finish mine first. So we were all looking at each other, all of us parents, like, oh my goodness, what did we put our kids through? And it was awful. It was like a grown man dressed up in the Winnie the Pooh costume that was like, not cute at all. If anything, it was like <laughs> freaky, like, don't let your kids <laughs> run into the sky <laughs> in an alley somewhere. It was awful. It was like our worst field trip ever. So, okay. And that that's not my worst homeschool memory, but you asked if we had any ripoff field trips. Mine was sitting through the Nutcracker. 
Oh, yes! Yes! We the had nutcracker. to start the Nutcracker, and me and my friends were, like, half asleep by the time it was over. It was awful. Yes. It was so boring. Yes, and that was also at the Paramount. Yeah. But um, with that Nutcracker field trip, too, we got I got in trouble. Do you remember that? Like, there's other homeschool group, like, that's kind of sort of in our area. Um <laughs> ended up posting something about our group because us moms were sitting and talking to each other during the Nutcracker, but we were in the very yeah, back. Yeah, they were like, the theater. Was, and they were she like, they were being disruptive. Kid. Yeah, she was saying we were being disruptive. Go ahead. No, Elsa. she was laughing. She was yelling at us because me and one of my friends had been laughing at a funny part, and then yeah, like yeah. she's making rude comments about yeah, it. yeah we were laughing comments. at we the in... like one funny, funny part, <laughs> the, like the only part that wasn't awful. Yeah, well, I mean, for anything, I enjoyed it. If yeah. anybody's a Nutcracker fan, then. well, I don't think I don't think it was about the Nutcracker. I think it was the environment, and it was the fact that they were just dancing the whole time. Well, that's that's the Nutcracker. It's a ballet. But the thing that was funny for me is that we went with three of our friends, and there was we all had girls and boys, but we all had a crew of elementary age boys that we did not realize we're going to have to sit through this three hour ballet and the boys were done. Like they were just wanting to get up and play and the girls were enjoying it. All the girls, except for Kristen, yeah. but <laughs> it was just, Oh yeah. That whole, that whole thing was just, yeah, not fun. So, okay. Allison, do you have a worst homeschool memory? Um, it would probably be whenever I was little and we'd be doing math or whatever. And I'd like, Mom, can you help me with this? You're like, I don't understand that at all. Wait for your dad. So by the time dad got home from work, he would be all exhausted and just get... And, which, I mean, he has good reason to, but he would get frustrated because I wasn't getting it, but because he was tired from work. I remember that. Yeah. Wasn't it math? Yeah, that's what she just said. It was yeah. math. So was that... Yeah, and that's why we ended up switching to... Yeah, it was whenever you switched to a live class. Yeah, we switched part to Mr. D. Yeah, yeah, Mr. D math. That was part of the reasons why is because when she got into those upper levels, I could not teach yeah. math at all. Yeah, totally get it. Okay. All right. So the next question is, what has been your favorite curriculum we have used through the years? And Allison, this time we'll start with you. Um, It would probably be what you just said, Mr. D math. I enjoyed it more last year, the algebra one, than I am with geometry. So it'd either be Mr. D math or when I started this year, um, La Classe Divertida by Fifth Senior Gamache. Yeah, and that is called like the fun class is actually what it's called. Like if you if you Google it and go online, it's called the fun class. But his high school class um, is, say that again. La Classe Divertida. And that is with Senor Gamache, which I think I mentioned that in one of the earlier podcast episodes. Okay, she's I'm, telling me I'm saying the name wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm wincing over here. Okay, what is it? Senor, you're in Spanish, so the R is pronounced more like a D. So it'd be Senor Gamache. Yeah, and apparently Gamache. she's she's learned lots of Spanish from that class. Yes, Spanish just sounds weird to me. Okay, so Kristen, your turn. What has been your favorite homeschool curriculum? History so far? of the horse. History of the horse with beautiful feet books. And why was that your favorite? Because it was the only history that I like actually got and understood. And because it was about horses. About horses. Which actually, going back to your comment on Spanish is weird. English is really the weird one. We have so many different sounds and stuff for the words. In Spanish, like one sound, one letter. It's English so it goes back and forth and yeah. Yeah, English is, yeah. Anyway, okay. <laughs> All right, so next question. This time, Kristen, we're going to start with you. What has been your favorite project field trip or activity we have done while we have been while you've been homeschooling okay my favorite project was the mountain lion like deer thing like where we like oh from apology and land animals yeah. I, I would i think that one was really fun yeah and my favorite field trip uh would be touring course parks with 4-h well you didn't actually tour them with 4-h it was for a 4-h project yeah. yeah and so what was that project um that was veterinary science yeah it was veterinary science and we went and we toured a bunch of different horse parks we were trying to learn all about the different equine mm -hmm. fields and stuff. yeah and that project ended up getting you to the state fair yeah didn't it yeah so out of those horse parks which one was your favorite 
Well, out of all the horse parks I've toured, it was a Kentucky horse park, but right. that wasn't for the project. Yeah. Which, I mean, we look, like, we kind of counted that, but not really. Out of the ones that we actually toured for the project, probably... I guess what I'm getting at is, can you share why that was your favorite? Like, can you elaborate a little bit more instead of just saying, hey, we toured horse parks? <laughs> oh, because um, it was really cool to see, like, different barn setups and different barn like stuff that they had. So it was about the barn, not necessarily yeah. the equine yeah. careers. All right. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. All right, Allison, what about you? Um, my favorite project would probably I probably be you remember now we were little and like we had made the big volcano and like we covered it with play doh and stuff, mm-hmm. like all that. And actually I was able to use it again later because I did it as an activity to go along with my devotion. Your devotion for leadership training out at our bible camp yeah out at your bible camp yeah and was that like the time that we did the volcano are you talking about like the time when we actually made like the dinosaur yes yeah, yeah. so we did like a whole cookie sheet and we put play-doh on it and we made volcanoes and we actually mm-hmm. got real dinosaurs well not real yeah. dinosaurs <laughs> i was gonna say we can't get real dinosaurs <laughs> Well, we got plastic dinosaurs and like put them. We got real dinosaurs. <laughs> you know what I mean. But we put them like in the habitat and tried to make. There's an actual name for this, but I can't think of the name. Uh, of and, it. Then, and then the um the guy who was going with her to the leadership training thing got really mad at her because like he thought that his lesson was all cool and everything, and then she brought in a volcano. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now all the volcanoes are is baking soda and, and vinegar and, re- and real dinosaurs. <laughs> a volcano is not a real dinosaur, but... Yeah. And then I also really enjoyed whenever we did public speaking in your co-op. Oh, yeah, um, public speaking in co-op. Yeah. That was fun. I talked about horse breeds every time. Yep, the whole year. And Allison did different, all yes. different kinds of topics. Yeah, public speaking was fun in co-op. I like it. We co-op. were the actually, if it. you guys want a story behind that. So, and the... Uh, we were going over the different continents, and in Australia, whenever we did the speech, oh my god! <laughs> one of the kids was doing it on top ten most dangerous. Two of us. I was one of them. Well, yeah, but and he was doing it, and the <laughs> third most I cannot dangerous believe thing. He's sharing this. <laughs> <laughs> he said the third most dangerous thing in Australia, and he had a picture was, for everything. Yes, like, and he had a picture of it. Was Misty Bailey? <laughs> yeah, he's like. Okay, now the third most dangerous thing, this is, in my opinion, this is the most terrifying thing, and I think you can all agree. Then he held that picture. Misty Bailey. But I'm like, I'm not in Australia. <laughs> but he said I was a nationwide problem. <laughs> here, here, another one. Or a worldwide problem. Two more of the really, really cool dangerous animals. One, I forget what it was called, it's some sort of rodent. And whenever they're in trouble, they take their babies and they throw their babies at the enemy <laughs> to cause a distraction for themselves to get away. Just in case you thought you were a bad parent. And then the other one is like a snail. That lives inside this really, really pretty shell, but it looks like a normal seashell. And then if you touch it, then the snail comes out and, like, stabs you with, like, a really long, sharp tooth. And then you're, like, dead in, like, five minutes if you can't, like, get to the hospital. Yeah, so you guys learned a lot from public speaking and co-op that I'm the most dangerous thing. I'm the home <laughs> school group leader, by the way, too, which I found was even more funny. Um, okay, so next question, and this one, Allison, is only for you. Yay. What do you remember, if anything, about public school? I just remember one thing. So we've been talking about, like, this is sort of weird, but we've been talking about um, if you could pack lunches or anything for mm-hmm. that. And then we got there, and that day they were having chili, which, fun fact, I hate chili. You hate meat in general. Most meat. But then I'm like, I don't like chili. Can you, can you like have tomato soup or something? And they're like, well, if you take all the stuff out of it, it is tomato soup. <laughs> That's literally the only thing I remember. I remember a story. Okay. They didn't, they were like teasing her because her stuff was like princess or something and not Hannah Montana. Yeah. And kindergarten. Yeah. Kindergarten. It wasn't people. kindergarten. It was preschool. Preschool people. Yeah. And she got called, she got called a skank. Because I she came home from school and asked, Mommy, what's a skank? And I'm like, why do you even need to know what this name is? And they, she said that one of the kids at school caught her a skank because her boots were princess instead of Hannah Montana. Because at that time, all of the kids were all into Hannah Montana. But yeah, you wouldn't have remembered that because you were like... A toddler. I mean, like, I remember hearing stories. But I have talked about that through the years. Because that's one reason, one thing that ended up getting us to that pull her out of school. That was school 14 years ago. Yeah. Like, 
imagine that now. Not preschool 14 years ago. She's only 15. Oh, wow. Like 12, 12 11, Somewhere. something. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Well, we started homeschooling in December 2009, so she was five. Yeah. So 10 years. 10 years ago. So next question, and Kristen, we're going to start with you. What do you like about being homeschooled? Um, I like that I can work a, work ahead and get like two days done in one day. That way the next day I don't have to do school and I can go and ride horses and trail ride and stuff. So be able to have free time. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, well, I'll take that. All right. Allison, <laughs> what about you? I like the flexibility, being able to work around, put stuff on hold, take extra time to work on it if you need if you need it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I will take both of those answers. Next question. Here's another one that I'm not really sure if I want to hear the answer to. <laughs> and Allison, we'll start with you on this one. And that is, what do you dislike about being homeschooled? Well, whenever you're public school friends are they talking about school or teachers and I'm just like sitting there <laughs> yeah actually um we'd been working the concession stand for a football game after cross-country practice one day and they were talking about their teachers and one of them one of my friends asked me what do you think of him and I'm like um I'm homeschooled <laughs> she's like oh yeah I keep forgetting that you're homeschooled yeah, yeah, you're normal. How can yeah. you be homeschooled? Well, I think she said because she was so social. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you have different teachers with being homeschooled, even though you're homeschooled. Like, you have co-op teachers. Well, they were talking about a, a specific teacher at their school. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. All right. So, Kristen, what about you? What do you dislike about being homeschooled? Getting interrupted by my family while doing school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can you elaborate on that? Like, we um, interrupt you? Mom coming in to get books that she forgot for Daniel. Dad coming in because he forgets I'm in there and he wants to eat breakfast in there and watch TV. Uh, Daniel going in there because he forgets I'm doing school and he wants to play with his toys. <laughs> All um, of those fun yeah. things. So explain to everybody where you do school and why then you're interrupted. Uh, I do it in, like, our second living. Yeah, you've got a little desk in there in yeah. the second living area because Allison does school in your room. You yeah. guys share a room. And I do school in the dining room. So, yeah. yeah. So you get interrupted. Okay. Allison doesn't have to worry about that. You interrupt her sometimes. I've seen yeah. you interrupt her. Yeah. I don't say anything. And then <laughs> she's still interrupt her. And I wait until after I'm done with school. I have to get like a book or something that's like right near the door. Yeah. Occasionally, dad will go in there because he's like. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because he's home during the day whenever he's on second shift. Or you'll go in there sometimes. I but like to I knock know. on the door and be like, hey. Yeah. You guys do That's anything? a little different than like the type of interrupting. Yeah. She does yeah. get interrupted quite a bit. Why don't you do it in mom's room anymore? Because it's not where my desk is and I can't stand her desk. <laughs> her desk, like it just has space for the computer and then it has like that big thing here and like it's just... Yeah. And plus, my desk has, like, this little board in the back that I, like, I rest my feet on. And hers doesn't have that. And it feels really weird. And it's my desk, not yours. Yeah. So she has her own desk. Okay. The next question is, have you ever considered public school? So whose turn is it? Who's, it's, it's Kristen's her. turn. Uh-oh. All right, Kristen, have you ever considered public school? Not seriously. But, like, a few years ago, before I, like, really was allowed to actually do anything with horses and interrupting and arguing was really bad um i did consider it then but now that arguing has gotten less worse and i ride horses i haven't thought about it yeah and so with the arguing what do you mean by that i mean i like how you just like with the <laughs> arguing <laughs> well do you feel that with okay so i guess where i'm getting at with this is i know what season you're talking about in our in our lives and our in our lives but with that season, we ended up going ahead and giving in and letting you take on horses, even though you were not showing responsibility at that time. Do you or do you not think that with the horses, you got added responsibility and that in turn helped with the arguing? Do you think that helped at all? Yes. Yeah. So in general, horses. Horses are mending our family. <laughs> 
this has made our lives better. Um, some of our lives. Not the life of the person who shares a room with her and has to listen to her obsess over her horse 24-7. Yeah. But, anyway. I love her, though. So, with horses, though, um, so you now are, do you consider public school at all? No. No, not at all? She's like, she just literally turned her lip up like, no. No way. (laughs) It's like this meme. Oh, like Simba and Mufasa, like... We're showing yeah. them the kingdom. All this, this is our land. But what's that shadowy place over there? That's public school. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think public, how would public school have helped you in the horse department? It wouldn't have. Oh, you just wanted to get away from home because we were fighting all the time? Yeah. Okay. I, I'll give you that. Now, the horses are keeping me here because it's it meant the family. And because mm-hmm. I've, I can go riding now while everybody else is in school. And the arguing stopped because you've in turn got more responsible. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent job. Okay. Allison, what about you? Have you ever considered public school? Um, I had. Mainly whenever I was first getting settled into our youth group. We're, I'm, we're the only homeschool family there, and I felt sort of left out. And then we got friends with some of them. I'm like, I want to see these guys more often. But, nah, I don't really think it would work for me. I mean, yeah. Okay. Plus, I like the freedom of being able to, like, choose what we do. We're getting a bunch of free stuff. Like, <laughs> like that big, like, um, microscope. Our microscope? Yeah. 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 Well, you, you don't get that free stuff just because you're homeschooled. You get that free stuff because... You, but if we were public schooled, we wouldn't get it. Right. So. Yeah, if you, were public sco- if you were public school, I wouldn't have my business. I know. We are your job. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you should start, like, giving us, like, paying us to... Paying you to what? To, like, be your job, to work for you. Yeah, I don't really think it works that way. <laughs> nice try, though. Um, okay, so so you no longer are considering public school? No. Okay, and we're going to do an actual separate episode with Allison all about why she chose to continue um, staying home for high school. So we're not going to elaborate on that question. So how do you make friends? Next question. How do you make friends, and what about socialization? Wait, tell them the backstory about this. Like, what? Okay. All right. So there's oh, not really. I don't, I don't know what this is. So yeah, you don't. Know, yeah, you do. Okay. So there's not really a backstory to this question, but so after Daniel was born, um, so this would have been 2011. It would have been fall of 2011. I took the girls and Daniel into the public school where Allison attended because my aunt was a teacher there. Oh. Yeah, my aunt was a teacher there and she wanted, she'd been wanting to see Daniel. And so I was like, okay, so I took her into, took the kids into the school. So they buzzed us in and everything and we got in, we took her back to see her and the Carols, we were walking through the halls and they saw all these They did, Allison and I don't think had really remembered being in the school and Kristen had literally never been in the public school. And so they're walking through and they're seeing all of these kids at the desks. And I remember thinking in the back of my mind, I hope they don't enjoy this and like think that they want to go here, but they didn't. So we saw, we let um, my aunt Mona see Daniel and then we went to leave. And as we left the secretary, which was actually the same secretary that was my secretary when I was in school. So this woman's like super duper old. (laughs) She saw me and she's like, Oh, hi, Misty. How are you? And I'm like, I'm fine. And then she looked at the girls And they would have been, what, seven and five at the time? Yeah. And she looked at um, Allison, and she goes, she's like, didn't you used to go here? Yeah. Well, what what are you doing now? Why are they not in school? She asks me, and I said, oh, I was like, we're homeschooling now. And she looked at Allison, and she put her hand down on the counter and, like, had this look of horror in her face. And she's like, oh, my, honey, I am so sorry. Are you okay? How do you make friends? And Allison looked at her like, I have friends. And then she looked, like, all scared, like, she didn't know what to say. Like, was there something wrong with her because she was she was homeschooled? And, um, yeah. Yeah, everything's wrong with her. So anyway, um, so Allison now, eight years later, 
how do you make friends? And what about socialization? This question drives me crazy. (laughs) Okay. You automatically assume that homeschoolers don't have friends. They don't have an opportunity to socialize. They're just holed up in their house 24-7 and never never experience the outside world. Yeah. But we have... We have co-op, which we do every other Friday. We have youth group. I do sports through the local school. So, yes, we have plenty of opportunity to make friends, actually. At one of my cross-country races, um, because I know some of the... I know that some of the runners from other schools from camp, from 4-H and stuff. And so I'm... And so we're like, hi, how are you guys doing or whatever? And like this point we'd seen people from at least five different schools and when my friend who was walking with me she's like oh my gosh you know everyone yeah it's actually true we had the same I had the same experience when I was at the school where my dad works my dad and stepmom are a bus driver our bus drivers and we they went to one of Allison's cross-country meets and we were at the meet at that school and I was walking with my dad and like we kept having people stop and talk to us and They were like, you know more people from our school than we do, which I found kind of funny considering my dad's still anti-homeschooling. And they both drive school buses. And they both drive school buses, but we knew more people from that school because there were some of our homeschool families who have sports in that school, do sports in that school. But then also we knew so many people from camp and just 4-H and just different experiences. So I feel like homeschooling allows more flexibility and more socialization. You have more free time to socialize. You have more free time to socialize, yeah, than public school. Did you have a different answer for that, Kristen? Yes. Uh, my answer is uh, church horse riding 4-H. I mean, at 4-H at the fair, I can just, like, basically go up to anybody. Um, oh, yeah, and there's this thing where I move my mouth and form words. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. It's called communication. <laughs> And that's so, how you socialize? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. All right. So do you guys don't feel left out in any way in far of the socialization department? Okay. Um, I also think it's cool when you guys go to homeschool conventions and stuff. You guys, I we've been to homeschool conventions all across the country, really. And there's a lot of homeschool kids there. And they literally walk from vendor to vendor and talk to each other. And I have found that their homeschoolers are more socialized than public school kids. And who, really, they tend to be a lot shy. They do. Yeah, I feel I feel, I feel the same way. Like, and homeschoolers are more comfortable talking to kids in like a variety of ages. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I didn't even tell you to say that. Excellent job. Okay, so next question. Um, I don't know who we start with Kristen this time. What would you say to a child whose parent wants to homeschool them, but they think homeschoolers are weird? Um, I would say the homeschoolers are proved to be smarter and more well-rounded than public schoolers. Um, so actually we're smarter. Did you do research? (laughs) Did you do research on this? Yes. Because you've got a whole paragraph. Okay. And in 2009, 67% of homeschoolers (laughs) in college graduated, whereas only 59% of public schoolers graduated. Homeschoolers have the advantage of studying things at their own pace and by their own understanding, which means that they can actually understand things other than being rushed to do something that they don't understand. And this gives him the opportunity to better understand the real world. And homeschoolers also have a better ha- also have better study skills because we actually have to look things up on our own and our own time other than having an, an, an adult or a teacher do it for us. So yeah. we're actually smarter. Okay. All right. You're so- <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. And I want to I want to add to that too that I have had numerous people through the years see my kids, not just my kids, but other homeschoolers too, and have actually, and that's this is what happened with me, wanted to homeschool because you see the good character qualities in homeschool kids. Like for me, um, I saw the homeschool kids in our church. She was my mentor. I've talked to, to her, talked about her on the podcast before, uh, Jamie Brown. I um, saw her kids and I saw the difference in her kids compared to the kids in our church who are public schooled. And wanted my kids to have those same qualities. And I've had people through the years come up to me and they've known other homeschoolers or they've known my kids. And they've been like, I want to homeschool because I see the difference in your kids and public school kids. And I don't want my kids to turn out like that. Um, So what um, happened with Brown? 
Yeah. Yeah. That too. Yeah, exactly. Um, that was, Kristen was mentioning a girl from our, her 4-H group who had spent the summer. I'd never talked to the mom before in my life, never talked to her. And she met Kristen through 4-H and actually came to us afterwards and was like, Hey, I love your daughter. Like I love these qualities in your daughter and I'm considering homeschooling now and wanted me to walk her through, um, the process. So yeah, it does, it does happen. I really, I feel that homeschooled, whether you're homeschooled or public schooled, it doesn't matter. If you're going to be weird, you're going to be weird. Like, <laughs> I mean, you have <laughs> weird homeschoolers. I you have those socially awkward homeschoolers. You do. But you have just as many in the public school. Yeah. So um, anyway, okay. So Allison, go ahead. What about you? What would you say to a child whose parents wants to homeschool them, but they think homeschoolers are weird? Well, I didn't do research on this. <laughs> but... I would tell them, I would talk to them about our day-to-day life. I would tell them, like, the advantages, like, sort of like she said, being able to go at your own pace, like I mentioned earlier, being able to meet kids in co-op, having more free time, and, I mean, but honestly, in my case, I have met way more people in public school who want to be homeschooled. Yeah. than those who don't want to. Yeah, a lot of people, like, um, one of the girls who are in sources with me, um, she says that, like, she wishes that she could homeschool, like, because I get to go out there and ride whenever she's in school, and, like, that she just hates, like, the environment and everything. And... Yeah, we've had that actually happen quite a few times with the girls through the years, where their friends, they might start making fun of them, not making fun of them in a bad way, but just, like, making little comments about them being homeschooled, but through the years, especially as they get older, they tend to see the benefits of it and actually want to be homeschooled. I have, I have actually witnessed that more often than the comments of like, yeah, homeschoolers are weird. So, okay. Um, next question. We have two more questions. So this one will start with Allison. How has homeschooling changed in our home through the years? We've become a lot more independent, which I think that's more to do with us getting older than the homeschool stuff. But yeah, we've just become a lot more independent in our studies, mainly going to you guys more if we need help or ex- or like kind of study more in depth on a subject. Yeah. Okay. Kristen? Yeah, mine, uh, I feel like, I mean, I don't know how like it's supposed to change, but um. I feel like all the changes that we've had is basically due to age, Mm -hmm. like us more being more independent on studying, but also on other things like even experiments, choosing what curriculums we do, uh, and just stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you guys were younger, I kept you guys together a lot for your school. And of course, like the um, types of experiments we do. Yeah, yeah, the types of experiments, definitely, they're more in-depth mm-hmm. than... And, of course, our homes, on our 100th day of school, we don't count to 100, we don't. <laughs> That's true, that's definitely true. Um, we, yeah, but then I feel like, though, your brother misses out on some of that. Because well, when you girls... Really eat donuts and count to 100. Okay, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I'm getting now the sense that all these fun activities I thought I did for you guys on the 100th day of school were not as fun. It, it was I remember fun, some, but I, mean, I remember uh, Sarah used to come for 100 days. Well, that's whenever I homeschooled like, her. We would, like, spin around and count to 100. 2D Taw. We did 2D Taw okay, all Alice the time. Okay, Alice that song. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the funny video on that? Where, like, that girl, like, gets, like, they're no. singing at, like, a school thing. and like the, No, we'll um, talk about We'll do that later. Funny. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Allison. <laughs> Here. Oh, you said something about you liked the 100th day at school. I'm saying, yeah, I saying I liked it and stuff, but I didn't, but I don't remember a ton of it. Yeah. So there you go, parents. Like, whenever your kids are this age, they're not going to remember <laughs> all of those fun things that you thought that they did whenever you were little. They were little. Okay. So you feel you guys are more independent, more live classes. I feel like definitely you're doing more live classes. And you guys do have more of a say, I feel, in what you study Yeah, now. more like we... We understand how to work websites better than public school. So I actually do think that. that's true sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Like, just like with live classes. Yeah. Everything. But then you you look at Lily and how awesome she is online, and I'm just like, wow. Yeah, I do think, I, I think that's one thing I would change if I had it to do over again, is I probably would have put you guys online 
for something at a younger age. Yeah. yeah, because we really just started doing online the past couple of years, two or three years. Yeah. So, you know, it would have been like fourth, fifth and seventh grade, probably. Um, I do wish I would have done that sooner, but I do think that co-op has helped you guys learn more technology too. Cause like last year you guys learned Google slides mm -hmm. because of co-op. I think that's really honestly, when you first started getting on the computer, I'm like, it was last year yeah. and I'm like, Oh, I guess I should teach you how to use a computer. Yeah. <laughs> and you were in sixth and grade. I, and everybody else had to have like fake pictures and stuff, like not fake, but like print offs. And we're just like, Computers. Yeah, I showed him how to do Google Slides. But other than teaching textbooks, I hadn't really let you guys on the internet for school, really. At least not for you till last year in sixth grade. You were a little bit sooner than that um, because you're two years older. So, but anyway, um, yeah, that is probably something I would have changed. So, okay, last question. Here we go. Do you think you will homeschool my grandchildren? I don't know. I mean... <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to have kids, so, I mean, if I, if I foster kids, like, I'm, I've considered, then I'd have to think about it. You can't homeschool foster kids. But then I guess not. Because <laughs> you're not having, you're not giving me grandchildren. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I want to foster to adopt, so. If I adopt them, could I? Yeah, if you adopt okay. them. Well, then maybe, yeah. Okay. All right, Allison? I'm only 15, but, I mean, I probably would, yeah. Probably will homeschool my, my grandkids. Homes, my homeschool days would include, like, doing barn tours, learning how to do important stuff like they did. Like, and the Little House on the Prairie yeah. days, yeah. You're going to teach them how to make, like, cheese out of goats, no. milk and stuff. <laughs> I mean, like, how to ride horses and clean stalls. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, that's what you do, like, two days a week. Yeah. In other words, I'm making them indentured servants. No. <laughs> having them learn responsibility. We have seen how that has worked. We we have seen how the responsibility has worked. You are Each correct. Each of my kids will have a will have their own horse at a young age. <laughs> that way they can learn responsibility. Yeah. All right. Or a cow. Depends on the <laughs> horse or a cow. Well, I mean, if they want a cow instead of a horse. So. <laughs> I mean, that's what Nathan wanted. Oh, goodness. All right. Okay, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast. If you have not yet, be sure to start your Christmas break soon. It is too late in December to be having school. And we will be on break from the podcast through the new year. And we'll be back with new episodes on January 3rd. So have a blessed and wonderful day, guys. Thanks. Bye. 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 This has been an episode of the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast. I thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please take the time to leave a rating or review on iTunes or whatever platform it is that you use to listen to this podcast. That tells the powers to be I'm not talking to myself. Also, hit subscribe. Then you will catch every episode of the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast each week right there in your podcast feed. You can find show notes and more at joyfullyhomeschooling.com and clicking on the episode number of the episode you are looking for. Thanks, guys. I hope this podcast encouraged you to head out there and have a more joyful homeschool.